Welcome to the American College Surgeons Bulletin Brief from the Frontline Surgeons Voices. With me today is a dear friend, Dr. Jeff Ponsky. Jeff is one of the founders and founding presidents of the Society of American Gastrointestinal and Endoscopic Surgeons. He also is the only surgeon, to my knowledge, to have also been president of the American Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy and the American Board of Surgery. Jeff is at many roles. He is currently our Director of Developmental Endoscopy at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation, where he serves as Professor of Surgery at the Case Western Reserve University, Cleveland Clinic Lerner College of Medicine. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Good to see you, Steve. Always a pleasure to see you, Jeff. And I'd like to start out the interview by telling us a little bit about the history of surgeons in endoscopy. Well, modern endoscopy really began, I, really modern endoscopy began with the Basil Hershowitz in the late 1950s when he uh, integrated flexible fiber optic uh, technology using uh, uh, fiber optics and, uh, and the fiber, fiber optic uh, uh, cables uh, to produce uh, the endoscopic instruments which could go through the a mouth or the rectum to produce uh, images. And uh, surgeons and gastroenterologists leaped onto this in the very beginning. Uh, in, in the beginning, uh, Hershowitz used the technology to examine <clears throat> the, upper end, uh, the upper GI tract and then the lower. And surgeons were involved from the very beginning. On the other hand, uh, gastroenterologists such as Gene Overholt and, and uh, Jerry Way and others were right at there in the beginning using the scope to develop uh, diagnostic applications of endoscopy. Surgeons were involved in a different way because surgeons saw the therapeutic applications of endoscopy. And so you had people like Hiromi Shinya and uh, Dr. Wolf, Bill Wolf who were in New York, who said, wait a minute, as long as we're looking, let's take out a polyp. Let's put a metal wire around these polyps and apply electricity and take them out. You had surgeons like Greg Stigman, who was from Colorado say, if we saw veins in the rectum and we called them hemorrhoids and we banded them, why can't we do the same thing in the esophagus? And we had surgeons like Michael Goddard and myself, who were able to apply surgical principles of percutaneous techniques to apply feeding tubes using the endoscope to guide the procedure. So surgeons were involved from the very beginning. They did the diagnostics that the gastroenterologists promulgated and expanded and refined, but they were able to provide the therapeutic advances. Indeed, in Germany, Nipsa Hendra, a surgeon, developed the first stenting of the bile duct. And so it's on and on and on. Surgeons have been involved in the advances in endoscopy, particularly the therapeutic advances. Well, th thanks very much. And, and certainly your roles as president of both SAGES and ASG speak to collaboration between gastroenterologists and, and surgeons. And you've always been a, a champion of it. Uh, but I think there may have been, correct me if I'm wrong, a tendency that surgeons kind of moved away from endoscopy a little bit and then more recently came back into endoscopy and realized the importance of it. And in your role as president of the American Board of Surgery, you, you realize that endoscopy is necessary and it's now a requirement that when I was training wasn't, to my knowledge, a requirement. Uh, what, what caused that more recent change of heart? Well, I was involved in that when I was here at the American Board of Surgery for good and bad. It, it, it put a stress on program directors in surgery to provide that training for their residents. On the other hand, I can't imagine a bariatric or gastrointestinal surgeon today who doesn't want to look at their anastomosis and test their anastomosis after they've done it. I can't imagine one who doesn't want to learn how to stent a leak or to do therapeutic stenting with a stricture. I can't imagine surgeons who don't want to implement the techniques of endoscopy to uh, augment their surgical procedures. And so today, endoscopy for surgeons is a technique that they use to augment their surgical procedures. 
Now, not all surgeons do ERCP, and I understand that. That was something I loved. On the other hand, surgeons today in bariatric surgery use endoscopy daily to assess the results of their surgery, look for leaks, stent leaks, to put in drainage tubes, to record and to improve the treatment of their complications. Endoscopy is, is part of what we do as surgeons today. Yeah, very well taken point uh, that it's part of what we do. It's integrated into our daily practice. And you mentioned a few of the newer uh, techniques, but uh, there are some others. And, and remember, people watching and listening aren't necessarily general or colorectal or bariatric surgeons. But some of the other things we hear is POM and POPs and, and G-POM. Can you tell me some of the more advanced, sophisticated things that have come online in, in terms of therapy through an endoscope? Yeah, and so again, surgeons were the leaders in all of these areas because surgeons said, look, as long as we're looking in there, can we do things? And some of these were actually conceptualized, but not originally performed by gastroenterologists to invade the wall of the GI tract. And for example, when we see lesions uh, of the GI tract, which are not through the GI tract, uh, such as T2 tumors and tumors of the colon, which are extensive and spreading. We used to just take out the colon for that. We have people like Emery Gorgon, who's at the clinic. We have a huge experience in doing what we call endoscopic submucosal dissection, even in the colon, take out these lesions without the need for surgery. We have people in both GI and surgery in the esophagus. We're taking out uh, pre-malignant and malign early malignant lesions in the esophagus. And we, have, we are doing uh, division of the esophageal muscles to treat achalasia where we used to have to do surgery. So it's not to remove surgery, to replace it, but to augment it, to choose the right procedure for the right patient. That, that's great. So it's a, it's a synergy, it's a symbiosis working together, surgical techniques, endoscopic techniques, surgeons and gastroenterologists. Where is this collaboration leading? What, what, what's next on the horizon in your crystal ball for, or in your workshop for where we're going? The only place that? we fail is when we fail to work together. The surgeon and the gastroenterologist must work together to achieve the best. For example, the gastroenterology community is wonderful at endoscopic ultrasound. Endoscopic ultrasound has led to tremendous therapeutic advances, but the, the ultimate won't be released, reached unless we use surgeons and gastroenterologists working together. And so uh, for, certainly in Florida at our institution, at the Cleveland Clinic, we work together. We would think, wow, if we do this, why can't we do that? And I'm here, so don't worry about the problem. I can take care of that, that's easy. Use this surgical technique in addition to the endoscopic technique because we can take that blood vessel very easily. So surgeons and gastroenterologists working together augment the ability of endoscopy and extend the capacity of this specialty. It's just the beginning. In 10 years from now, we won't even recognize uh, what we are doing today. So I think that uh, the collaboration is the important part. Absolutely, I, I completely concur. Give us your vision, 10 years. What, what, what are we now working on that's gonna become commonplace? Or are we gonna be doing notes procedures uh, as Dave Ratner and others had spoken about years ago? Well, I think the transmural surgery transmural, working through it and sewing it up, we'll be able to do resections of pieces of bowel and take out tumors and then sew up the lumen, no problem. I think that we will be able to perform innovative procedures like gastrointestinal anastomosis endoscopically or combined endoscopic and percutaneous techniques. We will take care of our complications in an endoscopic fashion in the future using ultrasound and endoscopy. As these new uh, modalities develop, we'll integrate them into endoscopy, not exclude them, so that we can deal with things like biliary disease, colonic disease, pancreatic disease, gastric disease, inflammatory bowel disease. The endoscope will be a tool, and the, in, the integration of surgery and gastroenterology is the way to go. It's going to improve the whole specialty. 
w one last question that w within intra-abdominal traditional endocavitary surgery, robot is something that a lot of people fancy uh, rather than laparoscopy or, or open surgery. Is, is there a role for robotic endoscopy? Oh, 100%. The robot refines our maneuvers. It, it helps us to perform what we do better and more exactly. So right today, I was, an, uh, uh, I was a, a, cr a critic of the robot in the laparoscopic surgery when it first began. It was expensive and I thought unnecessary. Now I would say we must integrate robotics into everything we do. It will be a great uh, addition to what we perform, do and perform, and we will use it with flexible endoscopy, just like we've used it with uh, colorectal and intestinal surgery as well. Thanks very much, Jeff. I, I really appreciate your insights and your, your time, the, the uh, robust history that you're able to provide and the glimpse into the future. It's always a pleasure spending time with you, hopefully soon in person rather than uh, through a computer screen. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. It's great to talk to you, Steve. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.